scene 1408. Don't forget to like and subscribe. India Stoker, a young girl, enjoys playing outdoors in her backyard. While playing, she accidentally punctures a wart on her foot and removes the pus. She has a strong liking for outdoor activities like tree climbing. A gift is hanging on a tree branch meant for her, as she has recently turned 18 and a cake is waiting inside it. However, the celebration is disrupted when she receives the news of her father Richard's passing. At the funeral, her mother Evelyn becomes visibly emotional. A man stands at a distance with an eerie presence. Inside the kitchen, two caretakers engage in conversation about Richard's demise. Mrs. McGarrick, the head caretaker, enters the room and they quickly return to their tasks. She then accompanies India. Noticing that India's shoes are too small, Mrs. McGarrick inquires if India has seen her birthday gift. Unlike previous years, this time the gift isn't shoes, it's a key. Until now, India had thought her father gifted her new shoes every year for her birthday. However, she learns they were actually from someone else, and nobody bothered to reveal the giver's identity. Curious, India asks Mrs. McGarrick about the key's purpose, but she doesn't have an answer. In another room, Evelyn introduces Charlie, Richard's brother and India's uncle. Charlie had been the man standing at a distance during the funeral. He had been absent for many years, and it took his brother's death for him to return. Due to her reserved nature, India doesn't openly welcome or talk to her uncle. Alone now, India lies in her bed surrounded by the shoes she's outgrown and memories that are destined to remain just memories. Meanwhile, Evelyn displays taxidermied animals that India hunted to Charlie and the other guests. Richard had taken great pride in India's skills as a hunter. As night falls, India seems to feel uneasy around Charlie. She crosses paths with Mrs. McGarrick whose expression becomes tense. Sensing India's suspicion, Charlie attempts to confront her. Seeking refuge, India retreats to a room, while Evelyn engages Charlie's attention. Seated on a staircase, India lets out a sigh of relief. However, Charlie stands at the top of the stairs, calling out to her. Unaware of her father's brother, India climbs to his level and meets his gaze. Charlie informs her that he'll be staying with them temporarily. The next day, India wakes up to find Charlie digging outside. He curiously explains the soil's qualities that make it suitable for digging. Later, as India engages in play once more, she overhears a heated argument between Charlie and Mrs. McGarrick. In the afternoon, Evelyn awakens and inquires about Mrs. McGarrick's whereabouts. Despite having seen her earlier, India denies any knowledge. Evelyn expresses her intention to go out, but India reminds her that her husband recently passed away. In response, Evelyn reveals that her relationship with Richard had grown distant in the past years. As he grew older, he distanced himself from her. Later that same day, Charlie starts his convertible car, accompanied by Evelyn. Meanwhile, India stays back at home, taking the opportunity to investigate Charlie's room. Eventually, both Charlie and her mother return home. At once, India discovers a gift similar to the one that had been hanging from the tree branch earlier. Before she can unwrap it, Evelyn calls her downstairs. In the kitchen, Evelyn and Charlie share a drink of wine. With Mrs. McGarrick still absent, Evelyn expresses concern as she's not adept at cooking. Charlie offers to prepare dinner since he's capable in the kitchen. He asks India to put the ice cream he bought into the freezer. Despite her reluctance, Evelyn insists that India follows through. In the basement, India places the ice cream in the freezer and quickly returns upstairs. Night falls and the three of them gather for dinner. Evelyn praises Charlie's cooking and reminisces about how Richard used to cook for her. Charlie notices that India has thoroughly cleaned her plate. While he's pleased that India enjoyed his cooking, she remains indifferent. Charlie proposes serving ice cream for dessert, but India declines. In response, Evelyn suggests that India play the piano instead. India still refuses, taking the opportunity to question her mother about Charlie's unexpected presence. Evelyn admits she didn't know much about Charlie either. He had been absent for years, and Richard had harbored some resentment toward him for it in some way. The conversation makes Evelyn emotional, so she leaves. The two are now alone at the table. While India plays with the wine bottle, Charlie slides over his glass. India takes a sip of the wine, and Charlie's eyes glimmer creepily. He just wants to be India's friend, but she deems it unnecessary since they're already family. The next day at school, India is in art class. 
A classmate named Pitts shows India his naked drawing of her. Behind them is another classmate, Whip, who isn't entertained by the bullying. School ends and students clamor by the curb. They're gossiping about Charlie, who's waiting by his car for India. India ignores him and takes the bus instead. Behind the bus, Charlie is in his convertible, following them. The girls are entranced by him, and they scramble to get a better look. As they near the home, India still refuses to get in Charlie's car. Inside, Evelyn is asleep on her chair, and India looks at her mother in disappointment. The next day, before India leaves for school, Charlie offers her an umbrella and warns her about the possible rain. She ignores him again, and she returns home all wet. The umbrella hangs by the gate, but India still refuses to use it. A wet and frustrated India grows angrier as she sees her mother flirting with Charlie by the piano. They notice she's home and invite her to come and join them. The next day, Evelyn is ready for tennis, accompanied by Charlie in Richard's clothes. Unannounced, India's aunt Gwen arrives and goes inside. During dinner, Evelyn questions Gwen about her departure. Gwen initially planned for a short stay but wants to extend it for India's company. Despite her smile, Evelyn appears unhappy. Charlie and Gwen reconnect, and Evelyn notes Charlie's break from his European life. Charlie suddenly leaves, and Gwen requests a private chat with Evelyn. Worries about Charlie living with them cause conflict, as Gwen's opinions offend Evelyn. Charlie diffuses the situation, preventing the argument from escalating. Post-dinner, Gwen prepares to spend the night in a hotel, inviting Evelyn to breakfast, but she declines. Gwen's departure is desired by her, not India. In the hotel, Gwen dislikes her room's condition. Meanwhile, India reads a book and thinks of ice cream, heading downstairs. Gwen realizes her missing phone, finds it in her room, and calls reception. Evelyn, appearing busy, adorns herself and heads to Charlie's room, where he's absent. Concurrently, Gwen is trying to call her phone from a payphone booth. Suddenly, she sees Charlie outside. He tracked her down to return her phone and to take away her life. In the basement, India sees Mrs. McGarrick's body in the freezer, realizing Charlie killed her. The next day, India avoids Charlie after school. She walks through another exit and nearby, a group of teenage boys is hanging out. They block India's path and make fun of her situation with her uncle. Pitts thinks India's mom is doing the deed with her uncle and that India has been joining in their incestual fun. India doesn't appreciate what he said and approaches her. In the distance is Charlie, spectating them. As Pitts winds up a punch, India meets his fist with a pencil. Before he can fight back, Whip arrives to scare them away. Whip tries talking to India, but she ignores him. Back at home, India expresses her frustrations by playing the piano. Then, Charlie plays with her. Charlie pushes her aside and performs amazingly, suggesting that he's not at all a beginner. India doesn't back down and plays with him. They create mesmerizing melodies that bring much-needed liveliness and artistry to the dull and silent room. Charlie reaches to the other side of the piano, and they feel each other's warmth. India feels hot and heavy as her uncle touches her. Involuntarily, her feet set themselves in motion, yet Charlie's playing comes to a halt. He leans in, and as India shifts her gaze towards him, Charlie vanishes. Everything had taken place within the confines of India's mind. A peculiar psychosexual daydream about her enigmatic and murderous uncle. That's what she'd experienced. After some time, India reclines on her bed. A sense of defeat mingling with an odd satisfaction. Descending the stairs quietly, she positions herself to eavesdrop on Evelyn and Charlie. While Charlie detects India's presence, he deliberately disregards her. Engaging in a flirtatious exchange, Charlie and Evelyn exchange smoldering glances, leading up to a dance. The night concludes with an impassioned kiss. Beyond the house, India witnesses Charlie's intimate gesture towards her mother, Evelyn. Charlie is aware that India has caught a glimpse of their private moment. Observing her retreat, he acknowledges her departure. Suddenly finding herself in an unfamiliar part of town, India's eyes land on Whip. She calls out to him, prompting his fellow bikers to depart, allowing him some privacy. He inquires about India's desired destination. The nocturnal journey guides them along the railway tracks. Whip questions the presence of a seemingly conservative girl like India in the middle of the night. Unknown to India, a dormant facet of her identity has been unlocked. Primal instincts and a craving for tactile connection. India takes off and Whip pursues her. 
Eventually, she pushes Whip against a tree, and their passionate kissing commences. However, the heated moment halts abruptly when India's bite proves a tad too forceful, drawing blood. This unexpected development intensifies Whip's desire, leading to his forceful advances. India's attempts to halt Whip's advances prove futile as he persists. In an unexpected turn, a man emerges behind Whip, Charlie. He too begins to remove his belt, which he then employs to immobilize Whip. India fights back, delivering a series of forceful kicks to Whip, while Charlie observes with a sense of pride in his eyes. Together, they manage to subdue Whip. Returning home, India heads straight for the bathroom. Stripping off her soiled garments, she futilely tries to cleanse herself of the tarnished innocence that remains indelibly stained. The shower's running water mingles with the sound of her muffled sobs as she replays the harrowing incident in her mind. Amidst her tears, India recalls the moment Whip managed to overpower her, a distraction allowing him to gain the upper hand. Swiftly intervening, Charlie employs lethal force to incapacitate Whip, breaking his neck. They find themselves back at home, an unanticipated burden in the form of Whip's lifeless body stowed in the trunk. Despite her lingering sorrow, a peculiar emotion emerges within India when she reflects on Whip's demise. This unfamiliar sensation propels her towards self-exploration. As her inner turmoil culminates, India reaches an intense climax, a revelation that stuns her. She discovers an unsettling connection between murder and her own satisfaction. In the aftermath, India ventures into her mother's room with a seemingly innocuous request to have her hair brushed. As Evelyn hesitates, India seizes the opportunity to take on the task herself. Amidst the gentle strokes of the brush, India confesses an earlier observation. Witnessing the intimate kiss between Evelyn and Charlie, Evelyn's surprise at being unnoticed by her daughter prompts India to unveil her well-honed ability for stealth, inherited from her father's teachings. These lessons from their hunting expeditions instilled in her a keen awareness of her surroundings, the art of timing misdeeds to avert worse outcomes, and the crucial skill of remaining composed and resolute when it matters most whether to pull a trigger or make a crucial decision. The next day unfolds, finding India situated in her father's study. Her gaze scans the drawers until she fixates on the bottom one, which resists her access. Armed with the entrusted key, she successfully unlocks the drawer's secrets. From within, India extracts a firearm and a box brimming with antiquated photographs featuring Richard, Charlie, and their youngest sibling Jonathan. As the images pass beneath her fingertips, she discerns an unsettling pattern. Jonathan's presence diminishes in the more recent snapshots. Another box awaits her discovery, yielding a collection of unopened letters addressed to India. This cache of correspondence remains untouched, hidden until now. Taking precautions to ensure privacy, India draws the blinds shut and immerses herself in the content of the letters. All of them originate from Charlie, chronicling his myriad escapades and bemoaning his profound yearning for her companionship. A palpable fixation on India is evident throughout the letters. India's reaction, however, defies concern. Instead, she's captivated and fascinated by her enigmatic uncle's persona. Armed with the letters, she ascends the staircase, though she inadvertently drops a few along the way. Collecting them, she notices a pertinent detail on the reverse side. The sender's location is the Crawford Institute, a mental health facility. Swiftly, India contacts the sheriff's office, sensing the need for intervention. Her eyes shift to the outdoors, revealing Charlie's presence characterized by an airy smile and a pair of shears in hand. An inexplicable impulse guides India to abruptly end the call. Meeting Charlie at the door, she proclaims her intention for his departure before Evelyn awakens. Nonetheless, Charlie harbors an inclination to share the truth about Richard's fate, while India's curiosity steers her towards Jonathan's narrative. These musings transport them back to a time when Jonathan was in the nascent stages of mastering stair climbing. Richard's preoccupation with Jonathan inadvertently led to Charlie's emotional neglect. A pivotal summer day unfolded, marked by Charlie's interaction with Jonathan. The siblings engaged in playful activities, which led to Jonathan accidentally sliding into a sandpit. However, rather than assisting his brother, Charlie callously employed the sandcastle he had crafted to bury Jonathan alive in a chilling act. The consequence was Charlie's institutionalization, where he would remain. And in Charlie's institutional stay, a day arrived when Richard visited him. This visit coincided with Charlie's imminent discharge from the mental hospital. As they journeyed home, 
Richard paused in front of a convertible, an extravagant gift for Charlie. Furthermore, he had orchestrated everything required for Charlie's fresh start in New York. Touched, Charlie's emotional response was akin to that of a child, moved to tears. Nonetheless, Richard had a stipulation. Charlie was to remain distant from India and his family. Richard's motive was to ensure Charlie's separation from India, the family, and their complicated history. This revelation propelled Charlie outdoors, where he experienced a physical reaction, vomiting by the river. Upon his return, a perceptible change had come over him, an ominous aura accompanied by a sharpened rock, which he ultimately utilized to murder Richard. India, grappling with shock and disbelief, strikes Charlie across the face, demanding to know the reason for his return after years of absence. On the day of India's 18th birthday, Charlie's patience wore thin. Everything he had undertaken, he had done to draw closer to her. Kneeling before her, he presents a gift, a pair of high heels, symbolizing India's transition into womanhood. With fervent plea, Charlie implores India to accompany him to New York. Eagerly, she consents, and, as Charlie's hand approaches to touch her cheek, their attention is drawn to Evelyn, who watches them intently, her expression inscrutable. Upon noticing India's new shoes, Evelyn offers an apology before leaving the scene. As night descends, she initiates a conversation about parenthood and relationships, asserting her belief that couples often have children to rejuvenate their bond. In her view, children offer the prospect of a fresh start, a blank slate upon which parents can project their unfulfilled aspirations. However, Evelyn's perspective on India differs starkly. Rather than a vessel for hope and transformation, she harbors resentment, wishing for India's failure and projecting her own bitterness onto her daughter. Evelyn abruptly departs from the dining room, heading upstairs to her room, where she summons Charlie. In a striking shift of narrative, Charlie instructs India to prepare for imminent departure. As he ascends to Evelyn's room to bid her farewell, India is left with the task of packing her belongings. However, Evelyn's demeanor takes an unexpected turn. She denies their departure, revealing that during Charlie's stay, she has pieced together a disturbing realization. The sequence of events from Richard's departure on India's birthday to Aunt Wen's abrupt silence coalesces into a portrait of Charlie's malevolent intentions. In a charged confrontation, Charlie advances upon Evelyn, culminating in a kiss. The intimate moment progresses, resulting in their descent to the floor. As the encounter intensifies, Charlie dominates Evelyn physically and calls for India to witness the scene. In this critical juncture, India intervenes, positioned at the room's threshold, brandishing a rifle. The atmosphere is fraught with tension as she confronts Charlie's heinous actions. With her mother's life hanging in the balance, India stands as a formidable force against the encroaching darkness. Aiming the rifle at Charlie, India channels the lessons her father imparted, she inhales deeply and fires. The shot strikes, and while Evelyn survives, India approaches Charlie to confirm his fate. Standing up, she's marked by blood splatter across half her face. The following day dawns with a freshly dug grave in their backyard, while in the garage, India conceals a pair of shears within a bag. Departing in Charlie's convertible while her mother remains asleep, India's journey takes an unforeseen twist when she's pulled over for speeding by the sheriff. Seizing the moment, India engages in a flirtatious interaction with the sheriff. However, a newfound inclination for violence surfaces, prompting India to stab the sheriff. The scene unfolds with a chilling intensity as the wounded man struggles for survival. With her rifle in hand, India takes a composed breath before administering the fatal shot.